Well, hello, everyone. I'm Yvonne Shearer. I'm a rheumatologist. I've been around for about 30 years, uh, practicing uh, in Fort Lauderdale, first at the Cleveland Clinic, and now I've been in practice for about uh, 25 years, um, a small uh, practice uh, that I've kept that way uh, in order to meet my needs as, as a woman. And we're going to talk today, th though, about diversity and and why women tend to take more time and we're not necessarily uh, reimbursed for that time but it does it is very gratifying in the way we see uh improved patient outcomes when we take that extra time and we're going to go through a case today that uh, gives uh, an example of that and I have here one of the second year fellows uh, at our institution, Corin Agoras, who was involved in the care of that patient. So why don't you, Corin, tell them what you would like them to know about yourself? Uh, my name is Corin Agoras. I'm a second year fellow um, with Dr. Sherry, who just inter introduced herself as my program director. We're down in uh, Fort Lauderdale um, with Larkin Community Hospital. Um, and I had the pleasure to um, treat the patient, serve on this case, um, and learn from it um, as well. All right. The particular case we're talking about is of a 38-year-old woman uh, from Haiti who came to us after bouncing around at different hospitals. And when she came to us, she was very ill. Her abdomen was exceedingly bloated and distended. She was uh, lethargic going uh in and out. Her vital signs were good though, uh, but we knew that we needed to admit her to the hospital because something was seriously going on. We didn't at that moment have her records, but we knew that she had lupus. We knew that she was on dialysis, uh, most likely from lupus nephritis. And we knew that she had been admitted recently to multiple hospitals in the area. We wanted to admit her again right then, and she would not because she had a negative view. She felt that she would go into the hospitals, they would treat her, maybe she would feel good for a moment, and then she would go home and be right back where she was. And she was uh, a bit combative, uh, even in her uh, somewhat lethargic a state. Her family, her significant other was with her and her oldest daughter was with her at the time. And they were also discouraged that she was going in and out of hospitals. And they challenged us, uh, what will make it be any different uh, going in the hospital with you this time? And I, I knew then, even though we were speaking through an interpreter, that part of the problem was she had lost her trust in hospitals. She didn't understand what was going on and she was giving up. And so I, I promised her that, that while I couldn't predict what she was going to do and how well she was going to do, I could tell her that we would be there by her side overlooking things and we would make sure that when she left the hospital, she understood what was required of her. And she still didn't go in. Uh, she decided to think about it. But that night, uh, they called back uh, through the on call and said they were going to go uh, they thought about it and they were going to go to the hospital. Now, what happened here is that we had to pull in the community because none of us uh, could speak her language. In the uh, office, we had used a translator through one of the tablet systems, you know, where you call up and, and they have a translator there. But that's not the same as having... Uh, a person there with you, and particularly, it's not the same as having a physician who spoke the language. So one of the first things we did was to ask that the hospital give us a physician who was from the same uh, nationality and ethnic group as the uh, as the patient, and that that person come and be with us when we spoke with her. Now, I know we're going over this for the sake of, of time, but you can imagine from what I'm telling you that this took a lot of time. And the long story short is that once the patient 
spoke with us in the presence of someone who really understood the medicine, saw that we cared, saw that we took the time, her whole demeanor changed. She understood what her role was. She understood what our role is. And I need to bring in that we also, I called around some of the local churches and I brought in a, a community worker uh, who also was part of this care and related back to me and helped me to understand the patient and adjust. And in the end, just to quickly uh, mention what happened uh, over time is that she went into a complete remission, came off of dialysis, and is now back to work. But the point I want to make is that women in general tend to get more involved in this aspect of care. Uh, initially, uh, one of the fellows, several uh, people went in with me. Uh, one of the fellows thought, you know, she's, she is uh, very resistant. She's never going to do it. She has her set attitude, which she did but her attitude was changed. And women, I believe, tend to spend more time uh, with patients dealing with that emotional, uh, social aspect. And therefore we don't see as many patients in a day. Uh, and there are male physicians who do this too. So I wanna put that up right away. But when they look at the studies, the women tend to spend more time and that time is not compensated for. So women who do that tend to be paid much less, and that contributes to why women doctors in general uh, get lesser salary. Uh, but it's very rewarding, I would say that. So uh, comments that you might have, uh, uh, Corin? Yeah, I just want to add that um, I was the fellow who um, followed the case with Dr. Scherer um, on the back half, um, inherited from the prior fellow. Um, and I saw her just right um, before she was getting better. And I think the bare minimum would have been to get the a translator that's in, in her particular case, Haitian Creole, um, which some of the um, hospital visits and prior visits before she came to our clinic, they didn't even do that. And when you can put yourself into the patient's shoes, you start to one or you start to understand that um you know, why adherence was an issue and in and, and, and the language barriers and, and that um, you get the sense um, from the patient that all our hospital stays and the physicians and, and staff were wasting our time. We got, like I said, the, the I would say the bare minimum, it, it was the translator, which helped a lot in our language. But then seeing Dr. Scherer, I, I would say, take the extra step, as she said, we, we had called around um, and by we, I'd say, you know, she did most of the work, but calling around the community leaders, um, getting social work and in their language, I um, mean, really, not only is the extra mile, but I think changed the case from a patient who would have just kept bouncing back in the hospitals, um, not getting appropriate care, not understanding how serious her disease was, lupus, lupus nephritis, I think eventually it was biopsy, I read the poor class four. Um, which is pretty obvious. We all know it's pretty serious, but um, getting her to the appropriate outpatient care um, on um, medicines besides steroids, maintenance to to, um, to keep her well and seeing her from my standpoint, that level of involvement and then seeing her not stop bouncing back at the hospitals, but then able to walk. Um, uh, she went from, what was it? Two out of five weakness, let's say generally, on her muscle exams to, to able to walk um, and, and go back and resume her job. Um, so it really left an impression on me. Some of these cases, the times, the, the time you have to spend, the, the leaders you have to get involved, um, ancillary services as well. Um, and if you didn't do that or only did half of that, we might have had the same outcomes that she was having before she even got to our clinic. So it, it really left an impression on me. Yeah, she, she, she was very sick, and there's no question she um, may not have survived. Uh, in addition to the lupus nephritis, as I said, she turns out she had a C. diff, and that's why she was so descendant, and apparently had been descendant for a while. Her labs were way off. But it's many patients that we see like this who need intervention so that they could understand. The problem was she didn't understand what was going on and she just needed someone to take the time with somebody who spoke her, her language and understood the medicine to explain that to her. 
and she needed to know that you cared about her. I think that uh, changed things uh, more than anything. And in fact, I remember at one rounds we went in and I noticed that the uh, translator was sort of shocked. And I said, well, what does she say? I thought, you know, this is something I needed to hear. But what she said is, I want to go home with you. And I laughed because that was just her letting me know that she understood that we cared about her. And that takes time. That takes time. And with select patients, we need to give that time. Women on average give that time more than men tend to give that time based on studies of the time that male physicians spend with their patients versus uh, female. And there are exceptions to this. I know a a number of male physicians who would have done exactly what I did. Uh, But it's giving that time that diminishes women's incomes uh, because that time isn't paid for. Uh, so one of the things that so we talk about the diversity and we talk about the difference between the physicians, um, women by nature are nurturing. And so we do that. But there are many men who by nature do that too. And I'm sure it impacts um, on their income because these are non-reimbursable uh, services. And I think that what needs to happen is they either need be reimbursable or somehow these kinds of services are adequately supplied even to people who are in private practice and not at major institutions. Or communities need to begin to do something about that, which is what we're hoping to also uh, get in place. But it it actually increases your, your enjoyment of medicine when you can see those kinds of outcomes, but those kinds of outcomes take time. And we've, we've, we've skipped over a lot um, just because we, we have limited time here. But the, the point is that women tend to go uh, into the social and emotional aspects of their patients' needs. And those things take time. And unfortunately, the, the time isn't really reimbursed, uh, except for from the emotional a pleasure you get in seeing a patient being restored who was headed uh, in a way that was not looking very positive. Any other comments you have, Corin? No, I just want to um, echo echo those sentiments as well, and and just from a fellow's perspective, you know, um, you know, we all want to be uh, efficient in in our times with the patient, keep it on schedule. Um, but I, I really learned a lot um, from taking the time, you know, when it's seen, especially in these challenging cases. And and as you said, that you might not be rewarded, um, or compensated, um, up front, but, you know, just seeing her, the, the difference we made and, and her, um, not only being able to stay out of the hospitals, but, um, leading a productive life. She said she wanted to, you know, get back to working and, and I don't, I, from my own, personal and medical opinion, I don't know if that would have happened if she continued down the same path and she didn't happen um, to have you as provider. So I was blessed to be in on that and and learn from it, uh, from all the points that you had just mentioned. Thank you. 